Hey, Daniel here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can integrate Midjourney with your make.com automations. Midjourney doesn't have an official API, so you'll need to use an unofficial entry point. In this case, we're using Go API to gain access to the system. There are two ways to generate images with Midjourney via Go API. The first way is to use your own Midjourney account. So with this bring your own account option, you bind your account to Go API, and then any requests to generate images are just relayed through Go API servers. This way you're not paying per image generation, but you do have to pay $10 a month to have this option. The second option is to use Go API's own Midjourney accounts. And with this approach, you're just paying per image generated. So it's a pay per use model. And here you can see the supported functions that are available with Go API and Midjourney. So you can imagine new images based on a prompt, upscale images, create variations, in paint, zoom, pan, all of the functions that you would be familiar with within Midjourney's own interface. We're not affiliated with Go API, but we have used this platform before for some of our other automations, and we've been pretty happy with its performance. That being said, unofficial APIs are never going to be as reliable as official APIs, um, so you can't really expect a 100% uptime with these. So to get started, click Try API for free, and that'll bring you into your dashboard. And you can see all of the various services and models they have on the left-hand side. So we'll just click on Midjourney. And within this, they have a playground where you can test out some different prompts. So for example, a cute puppy, and then you can click Run. And as you can see, that generated a 200 response code, which means it has successfully posted the job. You get your task ID here, and then you can click Run here to retrieve the task results. So you can see your image is generating. It may take a few minutes. Click here to update your task progress. There we go, there's the images. And with Midjourney, you get four different variations of images. So then you would need to run the upscale function to actually increase the resolution of one of these images. And you can see the response that you're getting from that get task call there as well. So we're gonna be doing all of this in make.com, but it's good just to see how the system actually works. You need to trigger the request, you need to wait a period of time, and then you need to get the task or get the results. There's information then on the types of functions that you can use based off the versions of Midjourney and then the different costs per function as you can see there. There's also a full task history, which is great because if you need to troubleshoot or debug any issues you're having with generating images, you can see, did the call fail? And maybe it was a case of a specific call may have taken too long to actually return. So you can see that that call that I just triggered took around 32 seconds to actually respond. And under API settings, you can see that we're currently in pay per use. If you wanted to bring your own Midjourney account, you could click on this. You would switch to that mode and then you would need to follow the instructions to bind your Midjourney account to Go API. So we'll leave it at pay per use for the moment. If you click Run API, you can get the full API documentation for this endpoint. So we'll be hitting this task API, and you can try it out here as well. So you can see that this is the prompt that's been passed. So this is a flying night city. So what we need to do is copy this body out and put it into a HTTP request within make.com. Okay, so let's get our scenario set up. So log into make and create a new scenario. If you'd like to get way ahead in your AI automations, then check out the link in the description to our community, the AI Automators, where you'll be able to access this mid-journey micro template. We also run lots of live workshops to help members out. We have courses, we have lots of templates. We'd love to see you here, so check it out below. So first things first, we need to use this HTTP HTTP make a request module. And then we just need to copy in all of the information from the documentation. So this is the imagine request. We can bring that into there. We're gonna to post to this request. We'll be sending in a raw JSON. So you can choose that there. And if we come back in here, we have this body. So we can copy this out and just paste that in there. If you use control V, you kind of end up with this kind of mess of white spaces. So if you delete that out and just paste as plain text, it's nicely formatted and easier to read. So the model is mid journey. The task type is to imagine, and this is the prompt. Now, obviously this is hard coded. So if we just save that for a second, maybe let's just add a module here. We'll set a variable and this can be our image prompt. So we'll put that there. Now, when you actually set this up as part of an automation, maybe the image prompt will be coming from an Airtable or a Google Sheet, or maybe ChatGPT or an LLM is generating an image prompt for a news article, for example, whatever the use case is. So we have that in here now. So let's then remove this out. So we'll put in our new variable, which is that one. We'll leave the aspect ratio on the process mode as is for the moment. Now. Go API do support webhooks. It's definitely a better approach to use webhooks. And I've done that in some of my other Go API videos. For the moment, I'm not going to use that and I'll just put in a sleep for 60 seconds. So that is the image prompt and that's trigger image generation. So, okay, let's save that. Now let's run this. Yeah, we haven't passed any authorizations. So let's have a look. So let's see what headers we need to pass. So we have X API key, so get that there. And then we need to get our API key. So this is set on the bottom left, API keys. So your API key appears here. If you don't have a copy of this, you can just click reset key. It'll provide it to you in plain text, which you can copy. I'll cycle this key after this video. And then you can just paste it 
in there. So let's try that one now, save and run it. Okay, so we have all green, let's have a look. I forgot to parse the data. So come back in here and just click parse response and do that again, because we need to be able to use the task ID when we're going to, to fetch the results of that task. Okay, so that's better. So here's data, data, and then you can see the task ID. And under output, nothing is appearing yet because the task is pending, as you can see there. So next up, we're going to put in a sleep module. This it really isn't the best approach. Um, polling or webhooks are a better approach. So the problem here is if we put in, say, 60 seconds, and if the generation of the image takes longer than 60 seconds in mid-journey or on Go API servers, then this scenario will either encounter an error because the image doesn't exist when we go to fetch it, or it won't trigger an error, but the image won't be saved. So it's obviously not ideal. So there are better approaches. I'll leave links in the description below for how to set up webhooks with Go API and also how to use polling in make.com, which uses a repeater to constantly check to see has the task succeeded. And if so, it can kind of continue along its path. There isn't native polling in make.com, but that repeater trick works pretty well. For the moment, though, I'll leave it just as a 60 second sleep just to show you how this works. So next up, we need to fetch the results of this task. And if you come into the documentation here, you can see that we've just triggered this imagine function. But we now need to use the get task on the bottom left here. So if you copy that out and then we'll come in here, create another make a request module and we'll paste that in there. But you can see task ID is a variable, but we need make.com to actually populate that out. So if you delete that and then just come into here and you'll see task ID and just drag that in there. So this is a get request. So you can see get, but we do need to pass in our authorization again. So we'll come into here and then the name is X API key. And again, we just need our API key, which is this one. So we'll paste that in there. And I believe that's it. We do want to parse the response again. So let's save that. Now you could run the whole scenario again, but what I might do is just, uh, if you press this bubble, you'll get the data from the last execution run. So we'll just do that just to get the task ID, which is this one. So if you copy that out, control C, and then if you right click and click run this module only, um, you'll be able to get this task that we just created, which is this one. So we'll do that. And this is the result. We have data, data, and then you can see the status is completed. We have an output and there's the image URL. And let's have a look. And there we go. There are the four images, two of which are quite realistic. The other two are quite stylized, but yeah, it looks pretty cool. So next up, let's upscale each of these images and save the results to a Google Drive folder. So back into make.com. Just rename some of these. So that is weight. This one is fetch images. So here we are going to use a repeater because there are four images in the mid journey response. And we want to upscale each of those images. So within the repeater, then we're saying run this four times. It starts at one and it stops at four. Okay, we can add another module then, another request. And this one then is going to trigger the upscale API, which you can see there. So let's copy that out. Now it's the same endpoint. We're just passing a different task type. So actually what I could do, let's delete that and just clone this because it's the exact same endpoint. We're just passing a different body. So we'll call this one upscale. So the API key is staying the same. Again, it's just a different body though. So we'll come into the upscale documentation and you can see here the body that we need to pass. So just copy that out and paste it in there. Again, paste this plain text. Now you can see it needs a task ID, an origin task ID. So we have that from the previous module. We have that here. Well, we have that from both modules, in fact. So you can delete that out and just grab it from one of those modules. And then the index that you need to pass is which number, which image. These are numbered one, two, three, and four. And because we're in a repeater, we can just use the index of the repeater, which will be one, two, three, or four. So we can drop that in there and that's it. Save it. And again, we now need to put in a wait because Go API and Midjourney are going to take time to actually upscale the image. So we'll just wait for another 60 seconds. So that one is there. And then we just need to fetch the image again. It's the task endpoint passing an ID using the get method. So we can just clone that module. We'll rename it to fetch upscaled image. Now, the only thing is we're not using the original task ID. We need the task ID from here. This is module eight, as you can see. So what to do then is just delete out that and put in the task ID from module eight. Now we haven't run this yet. So you can see that I'm not getting this little arrow to download the data. Now what we could do, let's just cancel that because we know this is the exact same structure as the first module. You could copy that out and then in notepad, just paste it and just change the number of the module. So this is number eight. So just change that to number eight and then you can put that in there. Now it's not going to be solid blue in this case because it doesn't know this data exists, but we know the data exists because it's literally the exact same endpoint it's hitting. So it is the right data structure. Okay, so we can save that. So we'll click run once and we're triggering the generation of four new images. I'm going to wait for 60 seconds, fetch the image. 
and then we'll trigger the upscale of the four images. Now, I'll stop it after the first one because we still need to save these to Google Drive. OK, so the request for the upscaling of the first image has happened. We have got our task ID, which is there, and the status is pending. So the image is generated. Let's have a look at it. Status is complete. Here's the output. And there you go. There's our flying night city. That looks pretty cool. OK, so let's stop it there. It's currently upscaling the second image because what we want to do is save this to a folder on Google Drive. So I've created this test folder that you can see here. So what we'll do is type in Google Drive. And let's see, we need a upload a file, which is there. Then you can choose the folder. So I'll just choose that test folder I just created. Now we need file name and data. So what we need to do is download the file so that we can provide the data to upload the file. So let's just save that for a second. Come back in here and add a module. And under HTTP, there is get a file. So what this is doing is it's going to download this mid-journey image to make.com server, and then you'll have it in binary format to provide to this Google Drive module. So if you click on URL, and then within this module, which is module 10, just click on data, output, and image URL, and then it's going to download that image. So this is download to make, and then this one is upload to drive. And from here, then, we now know that make will have the binary. And well, it's even better. It's even already selected it. So HTTP get a file, and that's it. You can save that. And now let's do one more test. So click run once. OK, so that has worked. Let's have a look at Google Drive. Yeah, we have file.png. Brilliant. There's our image. Now, I think the issue is file.png might be overwritten the second time because it's a kind of a generic name. So let's stop this. And then let's open up here. We might just override the file name with the index. So let's change this up. We'll remove that. And then maybe, yeah, the task ID and then dash the index of the repeater. So at least it's going to be specific to this image number um, dot PNG. So I think that one should do it. OK, and just run it one last time. And that should work. OK, that's uploading again. And here we go. So yeah, the file name is now the task ID dash one because it's the first image PNG. So. That's pretty much it. That's how you can trigger mid-journey image generation using make.com and Go API, how you can upscale those images and save the results to Google Drive. If you have any questions on that, just leave a comment below. If you'd like to get way ahead in your AI automations, then check out the link in the description to our community, the AI Automators, where you'll get access to our make.com and n course. We run a number of different events every week where we can provide live support to members. We have an active discussions board, as well as lots of different system templates and micro templates, including this mid-journey one. So check out the link in the description to that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.